Hello everyone. Welcome to this video which uh, talks about radicals in SERDs. This is intended to be a very very quick review about radicals in SERDs and anything that you would require for IB standard level, IB higher level or pre-calculus or whichever course it is that you're doing. So let's cut to the chase immediately. What is a radical and what is a SERD? Let's review that. A radical is basically any number anything that comes under the root sign. So anything that is under the root sign, for example, the square root of 2, the cube root of 6, fourth root of 17, etc. Whatever it is, anything that comes under a root sign, a root sign, sorry, can be classified as a radical. What's a third? A SERD is a very special, very specific type of a radical. A SERD is a real irrational radical. So all these examples that I've given you are also SERDs. SERDs can also be numbers like root 3 or root 5, but not a number like the square root of 4, because as we all know, the square root of 4 can be simplified to 2, which is not irrational, that's a rational number. So this is a radical root 4, but not a third. A third is very strictly a real irrational radical. Let's quickly look at some of the properties of radicals. Firstly, considering just the square root, right? The square root of a multiplied by the square root of a gives me a. That's how it's defined. And the square root of a, therefore, is only meaningful if a is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, the square root of a would not be defined if a is negative. Few other properties. Square root of a multiplied by the square root of b is the square root of a multiplied by b. What is key to understanding this is that if I'm multiplying the same root with each other, then whatever's inside of the root, I can take under one big root and make it a times b. For example, let's say I have the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 3. Well, since I'm multiplying the same root, which is the square root here and the square root there, I can take all of this under one root and make it 2 times 3, which is the square root of 6. But if I were to have something like a square root of 2 multiplied by a cube root of 3, this I cannot take under one root because I'm essentially multiplying different roots. Here there's a square root and here there's a cube root. So this is one case where this law will not work. It only works if I'm considering the same root. The other root is, uh, sorry, the other property is the square root of a over the square root of b. Again, since I'm dividing the same root with the same root, I can take whatever I'm dividing under one big root and make it a over b. Just to give you an example, let's say I have, um, let's say the square root of 24 divided by the square root of 6. Well, I'm dividing the same root with the same root, so I can pull all of it under one root, make it 24 over 6 which I can then simplify 1 and 4 and I will end up with the square root of 4. And again, as in the case of multiplication, this only works if I have the same root in the numerator and the same root in the denominator. So for example, if I were to have um, let's say the square root of 4 divided by the fourth root of 6 this will not work. This will not work under these properties. So these are some of the basic introductory properties of radicals and thirds. Now let us look at some of the um, examples in which we can apply these properties and specifically how we can add radicals with each other, how we can subtract radicals from each other, multiply and divide them.
Alright, so let's take a quick look at adding and subtracting radicals. Let's suppose that we have something like this. 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2. Now since I have the same root and the same number under the root, so essentially the same radical, I can think of it as being 3 tomatoes plus 5 tomatoes for example. And that gives me 8 tomatoes. In this case this is 8 root 2. Or let's say we have something like 2 square root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3. Again I have the same number under the root, the same radical, so I can easily subtract them. 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1, so that's negative root 3. It's important to realize that when I'm adding or subtracting radicals it has to be the same third. So not just does it have to be the same root but also the same number under the root. Then we can combine them like we would have combined any normal variable. So you can see the analogy for example if I had 3x plus 5x well this would give me 8x. And it's the same principle that I'm applying there. What will not work is if I had something like this. If I had, for example, 3 root 2 plus 5 cube root of 2. Now this is not the same third. Yes, I have the 2 under the root, but there I have a square root and there I have a cube root. So these cannot be added together. Or again, similarly, let's say 2, the fourth root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3. Again, this will not work. In order for me to add or subtract radicals, I need to be dealing with the same third. Alright, continuing, let's look at a few problems. Um, well, let's look at simplification and what it means to simplify to the largest perfect square factor. So, if, as an example, consider the square root of 32. Now I know that I can express th 32 for example as 16 times 2 so I can say well the square root of 32 is the same thing as having the square root of 16 multiplied by 2 under the root. And then I realize well I can express 16 as 4 squared so this would be the same as saying having say having this. And if it's a multiplication and if I have a perfect square under a square root I can simply pull it out of the root and I can make this 4 square root of 2 because I had a perfect square under a square root so I can pull it out and make it a factor. Let's see what it would mean to, to combine all the rules that we've learned so far. So some of the properties, the adding and subtracting rules and these simplification rules where you simplify to the largest perfect square. Let us consider an example like say 3 square root of 27 minus 2 square root of 75. This example would combine all the rules and all the properties that we've looked at so far. Let's set about simplifying this because in its current form there's no way I can combine it. I don't have the same third so it's not going to work. Well, if I look at 27 I can probably express 27 as 9 times 3 and I want to because 9 we'll see later on is a perfect square. And if I look at 75 I think well I can express 75 as 25 times 3 and again I want this because 25 can be expressed as a perfect square. So looking at this, 9 like I said can be expressed as 3 squared times 3 minus 3 root of 25 can be expressed as 5 squared multiplied by 3. Now considering what we just did here where when something was a squared inside a root I could just pull it out. I'm going to apply the same thing to my example. So this is going to be, oh I changed color, it no, doesn't matter. So this 3 gets pulled out, I get 3 here, square root of 3, this remaining 3 which was under the root stays there, can't pull that one out, and this is 3 times 5, again, 
the uh... oh I'm so sorry I think I've made a little mistake sorry this was always a two this was always a two it's my mistake it's a two sorry hope that, that hope that didn't confuse you too much anyway this three stays put and uh, well I have nine cube root of three minus ten cube root of three which now I can combine because I have the same third so nine minus ten is negative one negative root three sorry about the little mistake I hope it didn't confuse you too much but this is how we would combine all the properties that we've seen by the way my multiplication is a dot I, if I have to for example write two times three I write it as a dot some people prefer a cross it really doesn't matter if you tell me in the comments what you like I'll go with whatever the majority says if you say do it like this I'll continue putting in a dot um, if you say cross is what you prefer then I'll continue I'll refer to a multiplication as a cross I think this is the European way of doing it this is the American way of doing it I'm not quite sure but that's what I was led to believe anyway alright that pretty much takes care of all the basic introductory concepts about radicals and thirds that you need to know except for one little thing which we'll have a look at shortly The final concept, the final introductory concept that we need to have a look at is called rationalizing the denominator. Now, oops, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. Oops, there we go, sorry. Rationalizing the denominator means writing a fraction without the radical in the denominator. A lot of people, uh, for some reason, do not prefer having um, radicals in the denominator that's fine there's an easy way around it so you know some people see this and say oh no no you shouldn't be having the the root in the denominator for whatever reason I'm fine with it but uh, a lot of people think this is bad math style so like I said fortunately there's an easy way around it what we do is we look at what we have here right which is a root 3 and we multiply this fraction both numerator and denominator with the very same radical so this since I'm multiplying fractions and I have to do it to both numerator or denominator both numerator and denominator uh, otherwise I'm, I wouldn't be keeping this uh, fraction consistent so this would be 9 square root of 3 multiplied by sorry over uh, root of 3 squared which again the properties of radicals tell us that if I have a radical multiplied with itself I just get rid of the root so I have 9 square root of 3 over 3 right and since it's all multiplication I can simplify and I can make this 3 square root of 3 so there you have it all the easy introductory properties of radicals and thirds in one place in the next video or in the same um, part of this video you'll see uh, a few solved examples where again we'll apply all these uh, concepts that we've had a look at.